a quick video here on my three gun rifle build. Uh, this rifle is pretty much ready to go. It's how I'm going to run it uh, in the spring for next season. I just want to go through piece by piece uh, what I have on this gun and uh, why I went with some individual parts and just kind of give you guys a, a quick look. So the first piece is the Magpul MOESL-S. And uh, this one I kind of went with because I liked the, the thicker cheek weld and uh, it's a little bit of a heavier um, buttstock. So a lot of people go super light on their buttstock. Uh, that's kind of the trend and was originally what my idea was to go with like one of the uh, minimalist stocks. But uh, what I ended up, why I ended up going with a little bit of a heavier option was actually because of the barrel and some of the things I was doing up here, I wanted this gun to be a little bit more rear heavy um, because uh, just for balance's sake, I wanted it to be a little bit easier. Uh, my you know center of gravity to be a little bit more towards my grip hand so that the gun didn't feel so nose heavy uh, when I was trying to manipulate the weapon and carrying it uh, with one hand. And from there, um, you can see a lot of blue parts on this gun. Uh, the, this is pretty much all the blue parts on here with exception of the barrel are Strike Industries blue line. So the next item moving forward here is their enhanced uh, carbine um, buffer tube. And uh, so that's there. Uh, gets a nice firm lockup with the Magpul stock. It uh, looks cool, um, you know, what else can you say about it? It, it has a good retention system, uh, particularly in com combination with their enhanced uh, uh, castle nut here. Um, it, you know, the whole setup works really well. This extended castle nut covers up the additional threads that are, are, uh, would otherwise be showing with a standard castle nut. And, uh, we get some uh, extra QD points. So I got a QD point here on the back and then one on each side. And uh, moving forward from there, I, I guess I'll tackle, we're in kind of the upper receiver now, um, upper and lower receivers. And so I'll go over just the, the rest of the Strike Industries parts that are, that are here on the gun. So I've got the uh, latchless, and you can see, I guess I should show you that that's a clear chamber, uh, no magazine here. Uh, I've got the Strike Industries latchless charging handle, uh, which is a, a good piece of kit. Um, and then I got one of their ISO tabs for this side to extend my charging handle out a little bit uh, on my dominant side for, you know, it's actually, you know, my left hand is what I primarily am going to charge this with. Uh, so there's that charging handle. Talked about the enhanced castle nut already. I've got the Strike Industries takedown pins. Uh, take down and pivot pin here and here um, so just adds a little touch of blue and they're extended so you know they're pretty easy to get in and out uh, this one's a little tight and I'll show you why in a minute when we get to the internals uh, the strike industries um, trigger guard here um, I've got the strike industries mag release here which uh, it's essentially the same size as a mil spec maybe a, maybe sticks out a little bit more just slightly oversized uh, but it's much smoother than my mil spec uh, mag release was. So I'm pretty happy with that. It's got good uh, texture on it. I would definitely recommend this. It's a simple install, uh, you know, to put it on there and replace your, your mil spec one with, and it's a solid upgrade. It's nice and smooth, uh, much smoother uh, in the housing, you know, when I'm uh, manipulating it than my, my old original mil spec. And then the last thing on here that is Strike Industries, I believe, is uh, my dust cover. And, uh, oh, actually, and I got the, the forward assist as well. I forgot to talk about that. Uh, basically, I'd never use the forward assist. It's just there because it used to be black, and I figured I'd put the blue one in there. Um, you know, again, the texture on the button's good. Everything fits and functions great with it. Just, I, you know, I don't remember ever using my forward assist and I don't know anybody that does regularly, but it's, it's there uh, again as an accent. So then the last thing is the dust cover. Um, I had heard some weird things about their aluminum dust covers. Uh, so I went 
with the polymer one because it was cheaper and I figured if it didn't work, you know, it was less money that I was going to be out. Um, and I liked the American flag uh, design that's cut into it. So I went with the black uh, Strike Industries polymer dust cover. So that's uh, kind of my Strike Industries parts there. And uh, so we'll get into some of the other stuff. So I've got the um, Hyperfire Hyper Grip. This is the glossy finish, uh, which is the cheapest model of the Hyper Grip. Um, they have another model where they color in their logo. Um, I, you know, talk about the options for this a little bit in my uh, review of this product. But the main reason I went with the grip is it's got a more upright grip angle, uh, which I like better to have a stronger grip, stronger wrist angle. Um, mostly for manipulating the gun one-handed. Um, I feel like if my wrist is tilted down anymore, I lose some power and strength in my wrist. So I like that a little bit more upright and thicker uh, grip here. I, you know, and I feel like it's a more natural point and shoot for me. Um, they claim it's better for the trigger. Your trigger finger it relaxes your trigger finger. I would say I, I'm not, I don't have enough time you know, on the trigger of an AR-15 to say that that with any confidence, but definitely doesn't hinder it. It's, uh, you know, it's easy to, to manipulate, and I, I feel stronger in the wrist with this grip angle. I'm also trying to get all my guns on this steeper, like, 2011 type, 1911 type grip angle, so I'm trying to move my pistol to that as well. Um, I just, I like it better. It's a more natural pointing motion to me. Um, and a lot of people feel that way, but some people don't. So, uh, you could definitely swap this grip out for something else that had a little bit more of a traditional, uh, shallower angle, um, you know, to, to get a more standard grip angle. But I, that's one of the, that's the main reason I picked this was the steeper, uh, more straight up and down grip. Um, so right next to the grip, uh, we'll do the two Elftman products that I have here. I've got the push safety here, and then uh, I have the Elftman three gun trigger. Um, there's very few parts of kit on this gun that I might eventually swap out. Um, I'm going to start shooting a match or two and see how I like them. Uh, the one piece that I might swap out is the push safety. I'm not 100% convinced that's what I want to stick with. Um, it's not due to a function issue. It works perfectly. I love the concept of this Elfman uh, push safety. Um, the reason I might switch it is here in my early kind of practice sessions, I'm having trouble, you know, when you manipulate this, you kind of turn it off with your knuckle here. So safety off and then you push in with this finger to, to uh, turn the safety back on. And so I'm getting a little confused between the pressure with my knuck, big knuckle there to turn this off and then having my finger, you know, because my fingers are pretty long, I can engage the, the mag release. And so I'm just having a little confusion with my muscle memory. Um, sometimes I'm, when I'm going to engage the safety, I'm hitting the mag well. Sometimes when I'm going to hit the mag well, I'm hitting the safety. But there's just some muscle memory confusion there that I'm trying to work through. Um, and then the other bigger reason, I think that is easily overcome with some, some more practice. Uh, but the other bigger reason is, um, on my shotgun, and I think most, most shotguns, and again, this is a three-gun rifle, so you are going to be shooting this gun and setting it down and picking up your shotgun quite often and, and the other way around. My shotgun operates the opposite direction. So to turn my safety off on my shotgun, I push with this finger and then to engage the safety, you push on the other side. So it's the opposite of this gun. With uh, this one, to turn off the safety, you push it with your thumb uh, and then to turn the safety on, you hit it on this side. So it's just the opposite direction. And I could see that maybe being an issue in a competition where you've got a, you're not just manipulating one weapon, you're manipulating multiple weapon systems. And if they're similar systems, but in the opposite direction, 
I could see that being a problem. So I'm just going to run it through some practice uh, when I actually get it out, you know, shooting practice stages. And I'm going to see if it, if it becomes a problem. If that doesn't become a problem, I really, really like the safety. But if it does become a problem, I'm going to have to switch to some form of short throw uh, safety. Probably I'll just go with uh, um, Strike Industries um, Strike Selector. So this is that's a part that might, long story short, that's a part that might switch out um, for something different. Uh, the other Elfman product is this Elfman 3-Gun Trigger. And this is not going anywhere. This is a fantastic trigger. Uh, we're going to go ahead and show clear again. So I'm going to pull this trigger. Uh, so it's an adjustable trigger, less than three pounds. It's a fantastic trigger. There's no take up here at all. Uh, flat face. And you can just see how little, how little travel there is. You're just, the thing, it lives on the wall. There is absolutely no... Uh, take up in this trigger at all. Um, so I'm going to just show you the reset here. Just a real short reset. Again, I, I, even when I take my finger totally off after it's reset, that thing doesn't move at all. You're just right on the break, You're right on the wall. Perfect break. Right, one more time here with my thumb so maybe you can see how little movement there is here. Right there, just, it's a beautiful trigger. So that, uh, that's fantastic. That's not going anywhere, safety back on. Um, so that's kind of my Elfman products there. Love the trigger, I love the safety, but I'm just not 100% sold on whether or not it's gonna work for me here. Uh, so let's get into the internals here a little bit before we move forward. Um, I am running uh, for buffer, which I kind of skipped over. Um, I've got the TACOM uh, enhanced or, you know, uh, what do they call it? Enhanced recoil or reduced recoil buffer and buffer spring system. So that's a super cheap way to get a super light buffer and buffer spring for a competition gun. And so I have, you know, once again, a video on that system, um, but that's in there. Uh, I'm not going to take that out uh, for the sake of this video. You can you can check that out on my uh, three gun gear um, playlist. Um, so that's in there, and uh, that's a just I mean under well, about fifty bucks uh, in combination with a adjustable gas block. That's going to help your recoil a ton by being able to take uh, some gas out of the system. And the other piece to that that really helps is a lightened or low mass bolt carrier group. Um, so I was mentioning before, I might have a couple pieces that I'll swap out potentially, one of them being the, the Elfman push button safety selector. This is the Brownells low weight bolt carrier group. Um, and it's about a hundred bucks, which is way cheaper than you can get a low mass or low weight bolt carrier group from any other company. And uh, this thing so far, you know, a couple, it's only been a couple hundred rounds, but so far has been fantastic. I've had no reason to want to swap this. Um, it's worked great. It's only an ounce or two heavier than some of the most expensive steel low mass bolt carriers. And uh, there is a link for this below. I do have a Brownells affiliate link below if you do want to pick one of these up. Um, it's a, you won't regret it if you're, if you're on mil spec, uh, weight bolt carrier group right now, this with an adjustable gas block and a lightweight, that lightweight $50 tack on, um, buffer spring and buffer system makes just a drastic difference. Um, but if I was going to swap something out, this would be one just because this was a cheap part. I just wanted to see what a low mass bolt carrier would do. I have a video with my thoughts on that system. Um, the buffer and buffer spring for 50 bucks made a bigger difference than this. Uh, but this still enhanced my, was able, you know, enabled me to lower the gas in the system even a little bit more. Uh, so for a hundred bucks, I think it's really worth it. 
Um, if I run this and I get any reliability issues with, you, with it, I'll let you guys know. Um, that would kind of trigger me to replace this with a higher end bolt, uh, bolt carrier. Um, and again, I'd probably go with the Iron City Rifle Works Black Diamond um, version, their competition, Gen 2 competition bolt carrier group. Um, but for right now, this is just one of the big steals that I've kind of come up with price-wise uh, with this build, um, where I was able to replace a really expensive part with a relatively cheap part, and I feel get really close to the same performance. And from there, we'll move up. I've got uh, my backup flip-up sights, you know, my iron backup sights. Um, I'll put a link to these in the description. I just got them on Amazon. They were cheap. They were like $30 or $40 for the set. Um, they're fine. I don't use them. They're just kind of there just in case. They're fine for what I need them for, which is just in case my scope gets totally jacked up. You know, um, I don't care about my illumination and stuff in the scope. Um, I'll talk about that in a second. But just in case this thing gets bumped and is way out of whack, I just need something that's somewhere close to being zeroed uh, that I can go to. And uh, these were the cheapest way that they had good Amazon reviews um, and they were cheap. And I put them on and they seem, the build construction's really good. Um, so I'll, I can't remember the brand or anything. I'll put it, it'll be in the description. Then moving up, I've got the Aero Precision. Uh, I believe it's the low profile series cantilever um, mount for my scope. Um, this is really good, really light. Um, I like this one. So they got the straight one. And then I think this one and then that's got some angle and then one with more angle. And I like, I like this one here. Um, so I'll have a link, again, Amazon link or Brownells, I don't know which, uh, for that down below. And then uh, that goes to my Strike Eagle, uh, Vortex Strike Eagle 1 to 6X. Um, you know, this is a, one of the cheapest 1 to 6 optics that you can get at, at uh, 279 or to 299 is usually where it's at i'm gonna link below um uh and it's really all you need unless you've got a match that does a lot of long range like long long range shooting this is totally good uh to 200 yards you know on body size targets you don't need anything more than this this is three gun specific at least for me this rifle and it, you don't, I mean, there's just no reason to beat up a thousand dollar optic unless you're getting paid to do it in my book. Um, there is a one to eight if you want a little bit more magnification, um, but I think the one to six is fine. And then uh, Vortex, you know, has an awesome, where you get Vortex's lifetime warranty with this. You can basically run it over with a car and they'll just ship you a new one. Um, there's just no questions asked, return pol or exchange policy. Um, so you just can't go wrong with the scope, you know, um, from a quality standpoint, if anything ever goes wrong with it, they're just going to send you a new one. So you don't need to pay more money for something that's going to last longer because th there's a lifetime warranty with this one. Um, so the, the receivers themselves, my upper and lower are just, uh, Anderson manufacturing, just their basic, you know, it's a $50 upper, $50 lower. Um, nothing, nothing special about them. They're just mill spec upper and lower. Um, when I don't have that Accu wedge, which is that little rubber piece in there to tighten this up, they're still pretty tight considering they weren't bought as a match pair. I think I actually bought them from one from Anderson and one from, you know, Brownells or something, uh, you know, so they weren't even made together and they were still pretty tight. Um, but that AccuWedge really takes all the play out of it. And I just don't see, I'd love a really high-end, cool-looking uh, upper and lower receiver. Iron City makes a great one that's all skeletonized and looks awesome. Um, but I just can't justify spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars on an upper and lower when I can get this set of, this combo for 100 bucks and put a $7 AccuWedge in it. And it's just as tight as any billet upper and lower you're going to find. Um, you know, so it it's pretty hard for me to justify that. But 
Um, if you want to build a real super awesome looking thing, then by all means, get a get a cool billet set and or get something Cerakoted or whatever you want to do. But for just a workhorse gun, the mil spec from Anderson uh, is, a, is a great choice. Um, so this is the parts of the gun that I haven't fired yet. Um, everything we've talked about so far, I've put at least a couple hundred rounds through it and can vouch for the reliability, at least to that extent. Some of it has, you know, thousand rounds plus on it, but um, everything that we've talked about has at least a couple hundred rounds on it, except for what I'm gonna talk about now. So the handguard, the barrel, um, the gas system and the new adjustable gas block, these are new parts and I my muzzle brake, I have a couple hundred rounds on it. I kept that because I like really like that one. Um, but so anyways, you can see through here the blue barrel um, if you just watch my latest uh, video or two, you've, you've heard me talk about these. Um, but uh, the blue barrel is from Iron City Rifle Works. It's the LRP 16-inch barrel with um, rifle gas, rifle length gas system. But the idea is that that rifle length gas system, generally speaking, you know, kind of universally is thought to lighten the recoil you know, the longer the gas system, the, the less flip and recoil you get. Um, but so it's a pretty expensive barrel. It's a pretty heavy barrel. Um, but the blue, I think, looks super cool here. And uh, that heavy, it's almost like a bull barrel would be for a pistol, um, you know, is going to really make this gun shoot flat. There's some other things about the engineering of it. I don't know if it has to do with the fluting or whatever, just the weight distribution um that that's why they call this their lrp series which is low recoil precision and then this is the iron city rifle works berserker light handguard this is the 15 inch model um again my video it's you know the video hasn't released yet as i'm recording this but as you see this video this one will the video on this will already be out so i'll talk a little bit more about that um but a super nice handguard um light enough uh, again, it wasn't, you know, it's not the lightest handguard out there, um, but for 220 bucks, it's a mid-range price, um, but uh, super sturdy, sturdier than, than some that I felt in this weight range, in price, price range, um, and it's on the lower end in weight, but it's not the lightest one for sure, um, but it's a great looking handguard, the, the machine works really good, um, great grip um, and texturing. Um, it's an aggressive grip and texture, but it's not sharp, um, and it seems to be finished really well. Their anodizing process is probably the best I've ever seen. Um, so that's the handguard. Um, probably the biggest thing to note here is there's no M-lock or Picatinny on this two-thirds, and then you, you get some M-locks on either side and the bottom as you get to the front third, as well as a uh, a few Picatinny rails at the very front for your front sight or weapon light or whatever you want. Uh, and then I put these ergo grips on the front here just as something to grab onto. Um, so I'm kind of getting my same purchase every time on the gun just for consistency and everything else. When I'm running a stage, it's just my hands are going to be somewhere right here. I don't really like the hand stops um, or the forend grips. So this just kind of gives me some point of reference, you know, that I'm in the same spot every time to keep things consistent. Um, you won't really be able to see it, um, but in there is the superlative arms. There it is, kind of, best view of it. Superlative arms, adjustable bleed off gas block. Um, I was using the JP Enterprise before and it was really good. Um, I had great success with it. I just wanted to try something different. Um, I wanted something that had more of like a positive click system as opposed to um, the older JP that I had, which um, you just kind of estimated how many turns you were opening and closing. You didn't get like click, 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 click as you turned it. The newer JP models, I do believe, have those positive clicks so you can count your clicks and, and always get it back to the same spot if you do have to adjust it. And then the front of the gun is... Uh, the VG6 Epsilon muzzle brake slash compensator. Um, I do have another video on this. This one I have shot with, uh, it's fantastic.
way better than the, the uh, AAC Breakout 2.0 that I had before, which was kind of an all-in-one uh, muzzle brake compensator flash hider that uh, could also take a, the AAC suppressor is a quick detach for a suppressor that I never bought. Even if you did nothing else to your gun, the a good muzzle brake compensator like this VG6 Epsilon makes a world of difference. They're under $100, I think they're like 70 bucks or something like that, links below again, and uh, they just do a great job. It's a simple install and um, you know, you can't go wrong with, with the VG6. There's some other great ones out there, but uh, I really do like this one. Um, but that's it. We kind of talked about every single piece in uh, Ad nauseum and why I selected it, why I'm excited about it. And um, the next video, hopefully, will be of me tuning this gun at the range. It'll be an indoor range because it's winter here, so it might be a little bit boring, but I'll get it tuned up and uh, some video of this running my first couple hundred rounds through and hopefully everything is uh, functioning and I will be able to give you a little bit more of a hands-on with the barrel and handguard and um, the new gas system and everything. But uh, the rest of it functions flawlessly and is fantastic. So I'm sure an upgrade of barrel and uh, the longer gas system is only gonna make it that much better. Um, but uh, we'll see that soon. So these are 30 round. You can see they're, they're transparent. Uh, these are from ETS Group. And uh, these are the ones with the built-in couplers. So that's pretty cool. And then uh, this is kind of a silly thing, but you need them if you're going to shoot in matches or outdoor ranges, um, which is a, a chamber flag. And uh, these I've got Amazon links for. Um, so this is sold in a pack of like 10, I think. Uh, they're pretty cheap. Um, they have Picatinny mounts. Um, so you can actually mount this when you're not using it right to a Picatinny rail. You need to put chamber flags in at matches and at most outdoor ranges when you are not on the firing line. Uh, so this is a great way to do it, pretty cheap. And then uh, it also has a key ring. So then I bought this little carabiner. Um, you know, they you know, come in some different colors, also from Amazon, links also below, and uh, you know, so I got them, the blue one, so it kind of matches my guns, so super cool, uh, but uh, that gives me the carabiner, so I can just put this on my belt or wherever when I'm not using it, I'm not digging around in my pockets or losing them or anything like that, so I bought a few of these, little keychain, carabiner keychains, and a pack of these uh, little small chamber flags and uh, that's kind of my favorite setup for chamber flags for matches so yeah magazines chamber flags little details that make a match or just a day on the range a little easier and safer <laughs>